Yann m'a proposé de mettre des ruches, euh, un nouveau système, quoi, pas nouveau parce que c'est un système très ancien qui a été utilisé il, il y a très longtemps, mais de faire des essais avec des ruches dans les arbres. Et comme mon lieu s'y prête, on a 25 hectares de bois autour de ma ferme, euh, je suis très partant pour ce, ce type d'essai. Hi, uh, my name's Jonathan and I'm here in Normandy uh, with some good friends and uh, we're going to show you how to make a, a tree uh, hive. So this is a hive cut into a live tree and um, hopefully if we make a beautiful tree hive the bees will be happy here and uh, live long. So uh, first I'm going to explain how we go make the hive. Um, this is a sweet chestnut tree. The uh, girth of the tree is 80 centimeters and we're going to cut a slot which is about 80 centimeters deep uh, our length into the tree. If the tree was thinner, say 70 centimeters, we could make the slot a little bit longer but make the cavity inside the tree smaller. But here we have a good 80 centimeter tree which is the ideal size for a tree. It's first time for me to cut a live in tree. <laughs> <laughs> See um, when we were cutting in there you don't want to go straight in with the chainsaw because what will happen it will kick out. So you've got to go in this way and then turn yourself in and then that, that, that way it slides in. This is where we now have the advantage with hard wood because with the hard wood it splits out really easily. The inside just needs to be smooth. I like the volume now. It's a little bit rough for the scorp at the moment, but you just pull down and you can quickly remove material. The spales help support the comb inside the hive and essentially we're going to have crosses of spales, one at the top and one at the bottom and these will support the hive. Uh, the important thing about spales is that they shouldn't be too thick. If they're too thick the bees won't build onto them so we need to make them about 0.8 uh, centimeters uh, wide um, by about one and a half, uh, one centimeter, and then the length of the spare is going to be about 40 centimeters. So, to make them, what I'm doing is I'm cleaving off bits of wood from the entrance door that we um, took out earlier. So, just to show you a little bit of cleaving, here I've got what's called a fro, um, and with the fro, I'm able to adjust the split down the wood. In fact, if I want the split to go this way, I will then take the fro and move it the other way. The length of the spale will need to be about, um, about that long, so I'll, I'll be chopping it up to there and I'm only going to be shaping this bottom bit of the wood. So to shape the spales, you're going to be needing to use the carving axe now. These are extremely sharp. You have to be very, very careful when using the carving axe. But uh, the technique is simply just to chip away at the wood until you get the right thickness. What I'm trying to do with this spale is two things. I'm trying to make it, um, when it sits in the hive, I want it thin this way and pointed on the edges. If you make it too fat on the edges, the bees won't build onto the spale. And the other thing you need to do is you need to make pointed ends. So I just carve away the ends here and make them pointed. When you fit it in the hive, you'll be putting it in at an angle like this and then you'll be using the axe, you'll be pushing it up into the grain of the wood until it fits in and then that will be secure in the hive. So we like home sweet home. Home sweet home, yes. yes. <laughs>
and the entrance plug will go into our hive hole through that slot there and this marks a point which is one third of the way down the cavity and this is important we this tail here of the entrance plug tells the beekeeper not to take anything from the from the hive um, in this space here one third of the way down the hive um, so I'm just going to push this in now and, uh, And what I want to do is I want to get one centimetre, one centimetre each side. So the slice of the hole is eight centimetres, the plug is six centimetres wide. It, uh, comb to go inside the hive and there's two reasons for this comb um, and the way we do this. Uh, the first reason is that if we want bees to find this hive and be attracted to it, it has to smell right. So we have this old disease-free comb here and uh, it smells just fantastic and the bees will find this irresistible and hopefully they will decide that this is a good home and uh, this will attract them. So it's not really a f uh, bait, it's more like a, a welcome, I like to say. Uh, the second reason for preparing the comb the way we're going to do it is that we would like the comb to be straight to the door. So when we open the hive, the, the slot and the comb both line up together and if we provide a hint to the bees how we want them to build the comb then this will assist in the management of the hive. So here we go, let's go and cut some 8 centimeter comb. It's very important to maintain the orientation of the cells because each cell has a very slight pointing upwards. So this is the top, this is the bottom. And now I'm going to put in the uh, peg which will fix it to the ceiling. These pegs have to be made of hardwood because they're going to be driving into the ceiling. But also you want them fairly narrow and thin because they've got to go through the uh, comb without breaking it. There we have a comb ready to go into the hive. So if this is the ceiling of the hive, we will be hammering the comb into the ceiling of the hive. And this comb here should be pointing to the entrance. And you can see the angle of the comb is pointing upwards. So we have the two sets of spales, the entrance plug, and we have fitted half of the uh, bait comb to the ceiling of the hive. I'm just making a tall stack um, for, the, for the door. Put the insulation and the camouflage um, on the door. It's so. only taken us about uh, just over a day to finish the hive. And I uh, couldn't have done it without the help of Olivier here. Mm. Olivier, do you want to say a few words about the hive? Yes, <laughs> c'était un plaisir de découvrir la première fois, là, une découverte comme ça, de creuser un arbre vivant pour mettre une ruche qui va rester ici présente au moins 150 ans parce que l'arbre est vieux mais le châtaignier vit très longtemps, même sec le bois est très dur. Donc effectivement un gros travail mais un espoir pour l'avenir. On attend le printemps pour que les abeilles rentrent dedans et puis avoir effectivement la première ruche sauvage créée par l'homme dans un arbre en France. Hey. Thank you, Jonathan, for your lesson. <laughs> Thank you. Mon ami. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you.